Most global leaders who rise to power pledge an oath to the constitution of the country they are to govern. Very few have been enshrined within that constitution. This is the new reality for the Chinese leader Xi Jinping, who now stands alongside Chairman Mao and the pantheon of the country's iconic leaders. Mr Xi's name and his political thought have been written into the very document that modern China is built upon. It's unclear, though, what this means for the country, but there is no doubt it allows Xi Jinping to tighten his grip on power. John Sudworth reports now from inside China's Great Hall of the People. On the closing day of its week-long Congress, China's ruling Communist Party had a message for the world. It is marching in lockstep behind Xi Jinping. Inside the Great Hall of the People, he was presiding over his own immortalization. Those in favor, he asks. And those against, with not a hand in sight. None comes the chorus of replies. Approved. And with that, Xi Jinping is given his own brand of thought, the first leader since Chairman Mao to have it written under his name into the party constitution. Despite the arcane language and the unreformed political system, this matters, of course, because the Communist Party now controls the world's second largest economy. What's happened here today confirms that much of that control now rests in the hands of just one man. Mr Xi tells delegates that his political philosophy will help build a modern, prosperous China, and he reads out its unwieldy title, Thought on Socialism with Chinese Characteristics for a New Era. With the Congress over, 2,000 delegates head home to a country that is certainly growing richer, but it remains completely unreformed politically. Chairman Mao may loom large here as a symbol of strength, but he's also a reminder of the chaos that can come when one leader has far too much of it. John Sudworth, BBC News, Beijing. Let's take you to Stephen McDonnell, also following events for us from Beijing. Steve, we're busy comparing this moment and the rise of Xi Jinping to Chairman Mao. Is that how ordinary Chinese people see it too? You know, it's interesting. His power has been amassing around him almost from the day he came to power. Uh, and it's sort of been happening bit by bit. So I suppose people haven't possibly noticed it. You know, it seemed that China was moving away from that type of leader in, in recent times. Um, and because it hasn't been so drastic, I, I guess they wouldn't see him necessarily as Chairman Mao, but maybe they will in the future because, as of today, if you criticise Xi Jinping, you're effectively criticising the party itself because his name with his philosophy is now in the Communist Party constitution and it essentially enshrines his power, well, almost until he dies. I mean, some analysts think that even if he was to ever step down in the future from the position of General Secretary of the Communist Party, that, um, you know, he could never be challenged because how could you question somebody who's in the very constitution of the party? Steve, can I really put you on the spot and ask you if you can to sort of crystallise what his political thought actually is? Well, you know, it is interesting because it's a mixture of slogans and things which kind of seem real. So the China dream, for example, that's, you know, sort of a bit warm and fuzzy. Um, but in his philosophy, I, I guess it... Um, it talks about the party being central to all things, everything from factory production to what's allowed to be said in social media. And kind of strangely, we saw his One Belt, One Road initiative also written into the Constitution, which is, you know, just this project of building bridges and roads between China and Europe through the stands. Now, it's very strange. I don't know, are they saying that this is going to keep going forever? 
Uh, does it mean Chinese people in the future could never question their tax dollars being spent on these projects? But all of these questions, just as giving an indication of how sensitive it kind of is, like from the moment we went to air from the top of the clock with John's package, none of that went to air in China. Someone's pulled the plug on it. So strangely, on the one hand, they want to sort of give Xi Jinping all this power, and yet we're not supposed to talk about it, or at least Chinese people aren't supposed to consider it, it seems. And, um, and Steve, of I, course... I don't quite know why they should be so worried. And, of course, there are critics and people who will be worried about him crystallising and consolidating his power in this way. What are their concerns? Well, some people will say that it doesn't matter how good a leader you are, that you need to be some sort of check and balance on power. And, of course, with Mao, there were some disastrous consequences here because when people went to him and said, Mao, the Great Leap Forward's not working, uh, someone like Deng Xiaoping, who ended up going on to be an, a leader here, he's thrown in jail. Now, you know, if you don't have someone who can say to the leader, maybe you're heading down the wrong path, everyone needs a critic. Uh, so that's what I suppose the critics would say. Now, the flip side, of course, are those who would say, well, at the moment, he's doing a great job. He's moving China in a great direction. I mean, this is becoming a modernised country, shifting towards renewable energy from fossil fuels. The economy is charging along despite all these predictions of collapse. So there's no need to worry. It doesn't matter how powerful he gets because he's a you know, simply fantastic leader. The world will be mulling this over for quite some time, I'm sure. Steve, thanks for joining us from Beijing.